Welcome back. Well, I'm getting down to one of the least favorite projects of uh, any card that I've ever done, and that's scraping off all the grease and grime over the, the years of leaky engines. Along with cleaning off all the grime, I want to clean off all the rust and prep it mainly for welding. I want really good, clean, clean metal to weld on to weld that new front end in. As well as cosmetically, I want to be able to paint it, have it look nice. I need to take the fuel line off and the brake line off. The brake line I will bend all new because it's old and it's got some pits in it. I don't know if I can trust a hard brake and not blow it out. I've experienced that. Uh, it's frightening, <laughs> to say the least. And the fuel line I will be putting back in because it's only quarter inch and I need at least a 3 8 inch line for the fuel injection that I'm planning on writing on this. The lines are put on with little metal clips. Sometimes they come off easy, sometimes they don't. This one doesn't want to come off, so I might have to break a few. Now that I have both the brake line and the fuel line out, I was able to get them out in one piece without having to bend them. So I could just use this as a pattern when I bend a new one. It's actually in better shape than I thought. It looked like it had a lot of pitting and corrosion, but it was mostly just dirt buildup. But pretty inexpensive, pretty easy to just build new. And I like to use a steel and clear coat it. And it gives it that nice stainless steel look without the stainless steel expense. And stainless steel, unless you have a really good crimper to be able to flare these tools, I haven't had very good luck with stainless. I've had excellent luck with the low cost steel. You say, keep it for a pattern. Try not to bend it up, you just set it aside. Same thing with the, the fuel line. Uh, the fuel line, I'll probably have to modify because of the new gas tank and going with a larger diameter. And I'm not exactly sure how it's all going to attach to the engine. So that, that'll be winging it, but overall, from the tail to the front, I can use this as a pattern. The kit that I got comes with a rubber line. It's a high pressure rubber line. They recommend not using steel. I don't know why. <laughs> so uh, I'm, I'm going to do like I always do. I'm going to go ahead and bend me steel and then I'll just use the high pressure lines to attach it on either end to the tank and to the engine. Leave a comment if you know better. <laughs> uh, I'll take any realistic advice that, that makes sense and I'll just use the hard line or I'll just use the soft line. We'll see. I do appreciate your comments though. When it comes to cleaning up the frame, I like to use an angle grinder with a, a, a twisted wire wheel. Uh, that'll get off most of it, and then I have a, a wire wheel that's just straight out that it will attach so that I can get down into some of these other areas that this doesn't get into. Uh, this thing will grab you. So wear your safety equipment, wear your goggles. Uh, don't grab onto your pant leg, did that once. Tore my pant leg, ripped my sock out. Luckily, it didn't damage my skin. <laughs> Could have been really bad. So, back to safety. As I'm using this, I'm realizing something. It's constant on. <laughs> it doesn't have a trigger release. If this was to get out of my hands, it would keep going. If it was to grab onto me, it would keep going. 
Not a smart tool to use on something that's just this dangerous. I'm going to get out one that's got a trigger and that's variable. This is on full speed or off. Uh, as you can see, it was grabbing. I mean, it, it'll grab and, and it'll really take off. So, not the right tool for the job. In order to finish cleaning this up and getting it ready for, for welding, I need to flip it over. I don't want to be underneath it. And by flipping it over, I can cut this flange off easier too. Make a, a clean cut and make everything line up perfectly with the cross member. So before I take the rear end off to lighten it up so I can flip it over, I wanted to make some final measurements. When the original cross member and the control arms was still on the frame, this point right here, between these two holes and between these two holes, would be the center line of the wheel. Now, according to the specifications on the Jeepster, the wheelbase is 104 inches. So if I go from the center line of the axle to here, I should be 104 inches. I'm 103 and a half. So I, of course, my mind starts going, why is that half inch off? And then I realize as I'm looking at the rear suspension, there's no load on it. So the, the springs are arced and the front end of the spring is fixed, the tail end has a shackle so it can move. So as that rear end flexes, that axle moves out a half inch to three quarters of an inch. So I know for a fact that that is the center line of my front suspension. So between these two bolts, between these two bolts, I know it's good. So now I need to think about the frame rake. How do I want the frame and the stance of the car because that will determine the angle that I put this front suspension in. There's a, a term that I've seen thrown around about diving, brake dive, nose dive. When it comes to the suspension and how it all is set up, you want it straight up and down and then that is adjusted in the suspension itself. So if I have the frame for big, big level, I'll want this 90 degrees to that frame, but I don't intend on having this frame level. So with that in mind, I'm pretty sure I'm dropping the nose on this about two, maybe three inches. I want to drop the tail end for maybe five inches. So now I need to figure out what is that rake. If I drop that X number and I drop this X number, what is the percentage? And my calculations, I'm looking at 3 to 5% rake in the frame. So I want to build that in. So if I've got a 3 to 5 inch rake, it is looking like that's going to level this area. Because this level, or this area is slightly twisted backwards. So if I do a little bit of a rake, this area then angles, and this area then should flatten out. So I'll have to calculate that all out before I take that rear end out. But my calculations are looking good. Now I need to tear that end off and flip it over. Well, just do the other side and this rear end is out of here. Rear ends out. Not posy. I never did check. I always wanted to. Not only is it not positive, but it is really sloppy. There's a lot of play in that gear. And it 
sounds empty too. <laughs> I'll have to take that back cover off and see what it looks like. As I was thinking about how am I going to get it out of this predicament, just jack it up, move the chain to the other side. Thinking this is probably good to be able to work on it. I mean, that was the whole reason for flipping it over. I just wanted to clean up the underside, paint it, flip it back over. Now that I've got this flipped over, I can see. They welded this bar onto the motor mount, I guess, trying to stabilize it. A horrible weld. It even burned through this bottom plate in a few places. So I only need to cut that off and then weld over those holes. But it looks like if I get it up on its edge, standing on the side, I'll brace it. I should be able to take care of that area. Uh, cut off those poor mounts, um, clean up that hole. I want to leave a little bit of a hole to run the exhaust through, but then I've got some plate that I can weld over those areas and make it look like it was factory instead of just somebody taking a torch and burning it, big holes in it. And then I can create a, a mount. So I'm going to have to play around with how to do that mount. Once I get the front end in and I get my motor mounts in, then I'll know where the rear mount needs to be. these wire wheels, wire tubes, columns. I don't know where I got them. I've had them, I bought these probably 15 years ago when I, when I was building the Buick project. They come like that. I'm pretty sure I bought them on eBay. Might have bought them on Amazon, but 15 years ago, probably not. I bought a lot of my stuff on eBay. As these wear down, you can see how they go cone shaped. This cone, this tip, reaches in all these areas that are, it's just a wonderful tool for cleaning up rust and grease. I mean, all around inside of there, that was so heavily coated with grease, it just flips it right out. And as these wear down, the tip starts to stick out like this one is. I just take my die grinder and I just cut that off. So every time these start to break off to the point where it's just that nub sticking out, knock it off the die grinder, and I'm right back to having that beautiful cone shape. And it just gets into all these tight little areas for cleaning out the grime and the rust. Then all you gotta do is go back with some good cleaner, and it's ready to paint. Even if you leave it where you've got a little bit of surface rust, Pour 15 and similar products just bonds really well to that rust. As long as you knock off all the loose stuff, you can just brush it on with Pour 15. I'm not sure how I'm gonna paint this one yet. I'll probably spray paint it, paint it with a semi-gloss black or chassis black. But yeah, in case you're wondering, Maybe Eastwood, check out eBay. They're really heavy, heavy bristles. They last a long time. One of these will do pretty much this whole frame. 